So after the international break, we're back at St Mary's, uh, Leicester City, the visitors, and I'm pleased to say that uh, Reedy from Leicester Fan TV is joining us to preview this one. Evening, Squire, how are you? I am good, thank you. How are you? Good, yeah, no, all right. I mean, Leicester got their first uh, win of the season yesterday, uh, a win over Bournemouth. An important win for the manager, do you think? Um, very important for the manager with um, how with how the fans have been looking at him the last few games and saying that he would need to be gone already. Um, it is big, a big, big win for him. And obviously the pressure's now kind of gone off him now. And before today's games, we were only one point behind Man U. So it looked a bit more positive. But then again, Man United are doing absolutely <laughs> rubbish at the moment. So. Yeah. So it's a low bar, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what have you um, What have you made of Steve Cooper? Because I know that that was a name that was linked with lots of jobs. I think he, his name was mentioned for Southampton at the time, and it seemed like a really shrewd appointment in the summer. But I know the fans have been a bit kind of split, haven't they? Yeah, and I've been one of the ones that have kind of criticised him for certain things: his late subs, his tactical decisions as well in in games, and I, I think. There is there's areas where you could say he probably is the right man to keep us up because obviously he did it with Forrest. But then on the other side, when we were in the championship last year, you you instantly saw a style and a philosophy and what how we wanted to play. And this year, I still don't see the style we want to play. It feels like we're kind of using Enzo's system to, to but changing it. And it just look, looks like it's gone backwards in a way. But that, and that's why I don't feel like we've got as many wins as we have. Um but again, I, I get the other side. So I get the other side of it about Cooper saying that he is trying to stay in games where we've not lost massively yet, and it's competitive. We are we're staying in the game, but it, we've not won games yet. And obviously, over the, until yesterday, which again we struggled, but we managed to get through it, and it was yeah. good to get the first win. Of the the long second half. Sorry, Steve, I missed that. Uh, Bournemouth, Bournemouth had a lot of chances second half, disallowed goal, hit the woodwork. Um, but it's, it's one of those ones where you kind of look back on it and, and a horrible, scrappy 1-0 win. It's it's kind of almost, I mean, it's Steve Cooper 101, isn't it, really? Yeah, again, it wasn't the most prettiest performance in the second half. We were decent in the first half, but the second half, yeah, it wasn't pretty. We kind of asked for the issues. The moment the second, the second half whistle blew, JJ on the right hand side was getting absolutely pelted by the, the new wingers that they brought on, and it, it just wasn't great to watch. Um, and that's kind of one criticism I have on Cooper saying he just doesn't change things, he's not proactive, he's always reactive to what the other team are doing, and it means that we're just late to everything that they do. So, again, that's probably one reason why we haven't got as many points as we have already. I mean, you'll be looking at the next run of fixtures the same way as we are, I guess. You've got some winnable games because you've got, obviously, the Southampton game coming up. Then you've got Forest and I think, is it Ipswich as well? Yeah. Yeah, the um, the next three or four, I said before, when we lost to Arsenal and then obviously including the Bournemouth game, we were saying that we've got four games now where mm. we, we've got to get points. And I, I said that the four, we've got to get nine points. And people are saying no, that that's like that's like top top eight sort of standards but in the next three games now we've got teams where if we want to be staying in the league we've got to be beating and obviously that it does include you which again I don't want to be saying that while I'm on this show but it, it is one where we've got to say we've got to get we've got to get the points against you. Mm. Um, Glenn I mean we need to take the learnings from Bournemouth and Arsenal into this one because we talked about the fact that your season isn't going to be defined by how you get on at the, the Emirates but it is mm. when you're at home against a fellow team that have, have come up. Yeah, that's that's true, and we've already we've already had the Ipswich game at home, which we didn't win. Um, you know, Leicester, we played them twice last season and got absolutely smashed both games. Um, mm. So it's um, it, it's certainly not not going to be easy. But uh, no no game's easier in the Premier League, but some games are slightly easier than others. You'd rather be playing Leicester at home than Arsenal away. So you know, we lost twice to Ipswich as well last year. So you know, we've we've got to we've got to go into this game. Um, and be positive and it's not just take the learnings from the last two games it's you know take the learnings from the the you know the four before that as well because there were some there were some good parts to those games as well but we just haven't managed to string it together for uh for a 90 minutes yet and and that's that's what we need to do you know we have we have to go into this game and and be positive from the start i mean i, I look i look at leicester's team and last year at st mary's it was the wingers that destroyed us probably in both games actually Mavadidi at, uh, at St Mary's in particular 
was excellent. So we got we got to look after them. I mean, Jamie Vardy, everyone knows about. I think he's about as old as me now, but he, <laughs> you know, he's he's still got something. But it it it's it's kind of indicative of of a lot of teams down near the bottom that he is still Leicester centre forward at the age that he is. Mm. I mean, he's been a fantastic player over, over the years, and if he played for us, I'd absolutely love him. But he shouldn't be playing as a you know up front on his own in the Premier League at, at 37, 38, whatever he is. So. It's um, you know, it's um, it's a game that we we certainly do have to target to win, and we we'd have to target it to a win for a win, even if we won three games already. But and that's the problem with you know with with only having one point, we we absolutely need to get started. I mean, there was I think there was five five teams that haven't won a game before this weekend. Leicester have obviously won one now. Yeah. So you know we. We have to get going. A, a couple of wins would would make everything so, you know, look so much better. But if we can't beat Leicester, and then we can't beat Wolves in the next time game, we've got to hope Gary O'Neill keeps his job until that one. Um, you know, then uh, then then it is it is going to be a hell of a long road back if we're going to get anywhere this season. So, yeah, Leicester's huge for us. We saw some good stuff, Alfie, against Ipswich, and then he kind of changed the team for, for Bournemouth, and that didn't work out. We've seen some good stuff for Arsenal. I'm conscious of the international break. He's got a lot of time to think mm. about this. Are we going to see Maxwell Cornet up front um, with Tyler Dibbling, or, or surely he, he's not going to throw us a curveball with the lineup again? No, I mean, it's a good point because they had nine days between the Bournemouth game, didn't they? So yeah. you, know, you wonder sort of what thinking had gone on there. You you. Russell Martin is a manager that learns. I think he makes mistakes, and he, he he's honest about that. And he, but I do think he tends to learn from them. And and uh, just, yeah, I'd be very surprised if he comes up with something wacky this time. To be totally honest, with you. I think the blueprint is probably there to play against one of the fellow promoted teams. Um, the thing about Leicester is you've, you've scored a few goals, really, haven't you? I mean, you've got goals all over the pitch. It seems like I know Glenn sort of mentioned the fact that your striker's fifty-seven, but like <laughs> they, they, they have a few players who can pop up with something, um, and that that does worry me a little bit. But the focus has to be about what Southampton can do, and you know the managers always say that. But I feel like sometimes this season that hasn't been the case with the way the, the teams lined up and the, the players have been yeah. used. Um, so you know, take that on board. You know, his own advice and make it about Southampton. Put the, you know the best players in the right place. Tyler Dibbling obviously on the right, whether that's Cami or on the left or whoever it is and then try and take the game to them and yeah um you know you've got two weeks to, to think about it it's not a case of you know you've got two weeks to work on it because they're going to lose half the squad to the international break we say this mm. every time um so it's not a case of uh of that yeah maybe they'll have a bit of time off as well um in that um but yeah it should be interesting to see what it comes up with given the maybe some of the previous records Steve, where are the? Uh, I mean, the atmosphere is going to be interesting, isn't it? I was just thinking, you know, if we get an early goal, then that's that's great. But also, the last kind of like few minutes, we've we've seen us throw that game away against Ipswich. It's it's just going to be tense all round on that that Saturday. Um, yeah, it will be, um, and I think that I think that'll be the case in case in both both ends of the ground. Um, and it was it was against Ipswich. I mean, didn't hear a peep out of them second half for the most part um, because they they didn't look like scoring up until the point at which they did. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's always one of those ones where you want to get the home home crowd. I mean, the home crowd would be up for it from the start, but you want to make sure that they're seeing something that they can continue to get behind mm. because that's where, like, if you get 20, 25 minutes into the game and you've not had a shot, um, then that's where, um kind of the atmosphere then everyone kind of starts to slump a little bit and it's like oh 35 minutes in oh, i'll go down and have a pint um because this is this isn't going anywhere and 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 that sort of thing and it's so yeah it's important for like the team's intensity to to remain as high as we can possibly keep it um because as soon as, as soon as we drop off then leicester can get a foothold in the game and that's where when leicester control games I mean, they certainly last season when they were able to control games, they could just pick teams off as soon as, as soon as a team that was behind tried to kind of make any sort of press on. Um, they've got so much pace up front and in wide areas that you just get torn to pieces. And we found, I mean, the game at St Mary's was was ludicrous in that second half. The, the counter attacks that, and I mean, we to be honest, we got away with it only being four um, one in many ways uh, in that second half. But yeah, we've. The crowd's going to be as ever is going to be really important, and we've just got to, just got to stick at it. And I think the Ipswich game won't have put people off because I think people will take that in the context 
um, than it was in that it was largely a good performance that mm. unfortunately um, they pinged one in the top corner via a massive deflection in the 96th minute. These things happen. Um, unfortunately, to Ipswich more often than not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, we're just going to have to, as I say, keep at it and with a bit of luck, um, we'll finally have have some of that luck go, go our way for once. Mm. What sort of team are we expecting to see, Reedy? Um, is he pretty settled with his, his starting eleven? I've not been over it all, to be honest. Uh, no, to be honest. Um, I think that's a lot, another reason why a lot of fans are criticising Cooper because, like I say, last season you had Mavadili on one wing, Fatu on the other. Um, and then, kind of, like I say, Jusby Hall was in that type of 10 role before, but now we've got a few other options now. But he always seems to change the winger situation every game. Either it's AU on the wing with Mabadidi on the other side, or it's it's AU on one wing and Fatu on the other side. But Fatu, we've barely seen the light of day this year since he's, he's signed permanently, which I think, in my opinion, is criminal for an, a really young player like that. He needs to get more game time and get used to the league. His first game wasn't great, but again, you can't just drop him for that. Um, but with the rest of the team, he's, he's starting to settle now. The back four is basically what it is with Christiansen, JJ, uh, Faze and Akoli, the new signing. And then in midfield, there's a few new signings from this year that have started to see the, the game time as well with Skip coming in. Uh, Winks got dropped yesterday, which was quite surprising, but it obviously did help because we got the win. Um, and then Ndidi, which again, he's been put into that 10 role like he was last year. And I just don't think he suits that. But I think Cooper does prefer to see someone more defensive in that more attacking role in a, in a, in a sense to, to make sure we're not going all out attacking away. So, yeah, like I said, the team the team's starting to settle, but there is still a few changes here and there every game. And obviously we're still... Go on. No, I was just to say, the goal yesterday was scored by Buonanotto. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. And and that looks a fa- you know, fantastic goal when he was involved in other sort of like um, long runs deep into the heart of the Bournemouth defence. So I, I assume he's coming off one wing and yesterday it was Mavadidi off the other. What Because we were linked with him, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was one of those that never really got off the ground. I know you get... You know, clubs like Saints and Leicester always get linked with the same sort of kind of players um, because of the size of the clubs and whatnot. So, how uh, it, you know does does he start every week? Because he looked terrifyingly dangerous. I have to say, <laughs> um, it's a difficult one because we've obviously signed a new attacking mining midfielder as well in El Canoos for twenty five million pounds, or 20, 20 million pounds, and he he only had he's only had one chance uh, in the team. He didn't have the best performance against Everton, so Buona Notte did come in. But like I say, the majority of the games at the moment, indeed, he's been in that role. Just I think majority of the time because of the defensive side of it. Um, but when we see Buona Notte in that starting eleven on the uh, on the socials, we we all like are a lot more uh, confident in games, like you say, because he knows what he can bring to that team and. People say don't fall in love with a lone player because hmm. the annoying thing is we can't buy him at the end of the season. That is the problem. Um, and that's why, in my opinion, I'd much prefer to see uh, the signing we did bring in on a permanent deal to, to have more game time because he is the one staying into the club at the end of the season. So, But like you say, Bonotte Bruno, is, is something different than what we've seen before, well, since Madison anyway. And we're obviously still going to be playing out from the back and, and we've been prone to um, a mistake here or there. Um, are we going to see Leicester kind of pressing us and, and getting us getting at us a bit early? Is that the, the style they're playing or is it going to be similar to last season, do you think? It's it's very different. Again, we, we always seem to have one good 45 minutes, either, either it was in the first half or second half. Last game, it was in the first half. Against Spurs, it was in the second half. There's always one half that we seem to do better in. Um, so I couldn't tell you if, if we're going to be good from the start or if we're going to be good from the second half. So, But the, the way we play is still kind of possession-based, but it's just, in my, in my eyes, it's not as calculated it was with Enzo because he knew the passing around the back was going to lead to something in the end. Um, whereas this year, it just doesn't feel like there's, it's going to come. It just feels like if it will come. Um, so, yeah, I, I couldn't say if we're going to come at you from the start. It's a really interesting insight into what might happen if you do change your manager when you've got a philosophy and a style that the whole club and everybody's bought into. So, just, your, I mean, your expectations for the season, really? Because I know last year the, the three promoted clubs went back down and Bookie's favourites this year. I mean, we've got Wolves and Everton that are a bit of an unknown as well. Is it 
the same as us kind of finish 17th and you'll be happy um yes i think like i say even if it was on gold in the 17th I, I, I wouldn't care to be honest but with the next three or four fixtures like i said that's coming up i think if we we do get the the wins or the points that we want to get then i i could see us honestly getting a bit more close to the mid table just because i feel like once you get them points in it for instance if i say if we say they get six points out of the next three then we're obviously all already out of that kind of relegation mm. area which obviously p- p- takes the pressure off us and hopefully gives us a bit more of a chance to to play more free-flowing football and hopefully get a few more points on the board so i i i, I say as long as we don't get relegated that's that's fine by me but i i think if, if we can get a few more points in the next couple of games i think we could we could get closer to 15th uh 15th 14th that so around there you could be off and running. Um, going to get some score predictions as well, um, really. So I'll ask you for yours in just a moment. Anything else on on Leicester, chaps? Are we kind of nervous? Are we optimistic? How are we feeling about this? Well, I mean, obviously we're nervous because it, the magnitude of the game is as such that you have to be. Yeah. I mean, it is huge. And there's so much pressure on it, not only for the whole season, but for the management and for the players. Um, you know, you, you don't really want to pin all your hopes on one game. But when you don't win in seven, that's what you end up doing. Um, so, yeah, obviously nervous because it's huge. Let's get some score predictions then, shall we? Um, Reedy, I'll ask you first. Guests always go first. Um, I mean, you got your first win at the weekend. So feeling confident? How do you reckon it's going to pan out? I wouldn't say feeling confident because I think, in, in a way, you're, you're, you're needing the winners more than us at the moment because, again, I think you're, you've not got a win yet, so you need it more than us. But I, I feel confident in saying because of the win yesterday, I, I do think we're going to have a good chance in getting a result against you. I will be there, so hopefully hopefully it'll be a 9 niler again, but it's not <laughs> going to be the case. It's not going to be the case. I know it's not. Um, but I, I will say I'll say a 2-1 win for Leicester. A 2-1 win for Leicester, right. Nice one. Steve? Um, oh, God knows. Um, yeah, I genuinely <laughs> no idea. I mean, this, this, is, this is one of those games where if we turn up and play... Um, if we put in the sort of performances in terms of being organised and having a game plan and kind of working to that game plan, as we did against, for the most part, against Ipswich and for the most part yesterday against Arsenal, even though we obviously lost the game, um, then I've got I've got confidence that we can that we can finally get over the get over the line. Um, the problem is the sort of 15, 20 minute periods that we do have in these games, even when we play well where we look like we're all at sea and, and we get overrun. And if Leicester, I mean, if Leicester have got uh, more clinical finishing than some of the other sides we've played in these games um, so far this season, then that spells trouble for us. Um, I mean, I saw Vardy Mister shanked a one-on-one out for a throw, almost out for a throw-in um, yesterday, which was, which was absolutely extraordinary. So uh, more of that, please. But um, yeah, I he's he's always had a decent record against us, as, and and of course for injuring our star players too. So um, <laughs> would like would like to keep him keep him a little bit quiet for once. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean let's be honest, I don't see us keeping a clean sheet. No. Uh, but at the same time, I do think we'll score. Um, I mean, we scored against best best defense in the league last season. So um, why not? Um, why not again this time? So I'm going to reverse Reedy score and go for a 2-1 win. Nice. Uh, Glenn, do you think this will be the first win of the season? Um, I, I I think so. Like, as I said the other day, I I, um, I manifest these wins and it doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> usually. But, uh, but no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the same this week. I, I think, you know, we, we do need the win more than them. It will bring a bit of hopefully a bit more focus and a little bit more resolve to our play. And Mm -hmm. it's just a case of doing it for 90 minutes. You know, I think we've seen this season at various times that we can be a good team um, with with the right players on the pitch, the right formation, the right mindset. Um, Obviously, we've got to cut out the defensive errors because that just kills you when you when you don't score many goals like we do. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm hoping, you know, look, looking at Leicester's team, I, I think there's I think the defence you can get at a, a massive, massive part of the game is going to be the midfield, and um, it'll probably be Downs and Arebo. Can can they dominate the game? Well, we but we can't, we can't afford to. I mean, when we lost at home to Leicester last year, that was a that was a Russell Martin disaster. That was when he started 
you know, he, he decided to play inverted full backs and Walker Peters was in midfield, small bone was at right back, and, and we gave away God, we, yeah. we, we had a go at giving away three goals in the first five minutes. You know, <laughs> if we if we turn up and do something like that, then you know there, there's there's no hope for us. But uh, we've got to think that Russell Martin's going to get going to get it right, and the players are going to going to carry it out and not do anything stupid. So I'm going to say the same as Steve: uh, two one win, two one win. And Alfie, just to complete the set. Yeah, I think in, just in adding on to Glenn, I mean, doing it for ninety minutes, I think it's also a case of doing it when the pressure's really on and you know they, they have done it previously under Russell Martin. Of course they have in the playoffs and in other games last season. But this season obviously you look at Nottingham Forest at home and you think, you know, first home game of the season, should have got something out of Newcastle and you know it's the flattest performance we've we've seen. Um you know you think about Bournemouth, all right, it's a bit of a rivalry, but it's also going into a bit of a, a bear pit in terms of the way that they play and aggressive pressing and completely Fucked that as well. Sorry for the language. I just couldn't think of a more eloquent word. Um, <laughs> and now the pressure's on in the case of, all right, they, they've done well once again against a big team. They, they've shown that they've got talented players and they can stick to a game plan. Now they've got to do it in front of their fans in a game which really matters. Um, and, you know, again, do, do, does, the, does the fog roll in, you know, do the, or, or do they handle it? That's the big question mark. But, I mean, I think it's probably going to be a TSP first because I'm also going to go for a 2-1 win. Wow. Jesus. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, just for a bit of context, I think there were a couple of people that got it right. Uh, four people um, with three points in the prediction lead this week. There are only seven people with no points at all. So, <laughs> um, maybe we'll am, get I one of, am I one of them? Am I one of them? Yeah, I can neither. Who's, who's predicting us to win every game then? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, really, thanks for coming on. Really great um, to catch up with you. And hopefully, maybe we'll speak to you a bit later in the season as well before the uh, before the other game. Yeah, no worries. Cheers for the invite, guys. Appreciate Cheers, it. Cheers, bud. Thanks for coming on. Cheers. Um, Cheers.